Not All the Beautiful Things is the debut album from What's So Not, who joins us here in Oakland, California. How you going? How's it going? Thank you for your time. No problem at all. Back to the Bay Area, yeah. and I've seen you quite a few times here. Yeah. And the thing that is remarkable to me is when speaking to producers, DJs, performers like yourself in the electronic world, it is the calmness before a show. We have a calmness, do we? Yeah. All you are us? really calm. Oh, I'm right calm. Now. Yeah. Yeah. And this is like the first major production that you're revealing for this tour right now. Yeah. And you're, you're calm and cool right now. I mean, if I wasn't calm, it wouldn't help, <laughs> you know? <laughs> is it normally your demeanor, though? Like, Yeah, this is, this is me. But, but it's funny, I'm very calm when things are very frantic. That's awesome. Yeah. You would make a great sports coach. Okay. <laughs> Things are on the line, tied game, you don't know who to put in. I don't know, you see all those great sport coaches, they're always screaming and yelling right. and spitting their gum at people. And, and then not, it, don't, it doesn't always work. True. You yeah. would be a great coach. Thank You'd you. You'd be like, I, okay, I don't know, but... here's what we're going to do. <laughs> you know, calm and cool and we're going to win this thing. And on, on three, go team. That's, that's like a really good one. That's a good approach. How are we feeling now, Oakland? Are you guys good? I made a reference to your debut album, which I find still kind of weird. Yeah? I, yeah, you've been a, at this a, for a long time. In a good time. way? Or like, oh, you mean in terms of how long I've been? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I was, I was, I mean, the, the, the model of how it all worked, if you're a young kid producer just making stuff on your laptop, um, it was all just coming up through giving stuff away for free on SoundCloud and having things get on Hype, Hype Machine and Blogs Report on it. It wasn't, it wasn't like the, the traditional model of sign to a label, they develop you as an artist and then they have all these people work with you to create an album and stuff like that. It was very much like sort of bootleg culture. Um, so from that I ended up just touring for six years and then I finally was able to take some time off the um, start of 2017. That's when I really started putting all these ideas that I'd written all around the world together, which became the sort of foundation of the demos that I put on this album. This record is four years in the making. You took a lot of time, and, and for the traditional rock band or, or you know, music that is music, lyrics, combine and, and release is kind of an encapsulation of their life yeah. for those four years. <laughs> but th this thing has been kind of an uh, amalgamation of that as well, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I wanted to really refine my skills in a lot of different areas before I tackled an album. So I came into this having a, a much better understanding not only of producing, but songwriting, uh, of how to work with people in a room and how to get like the most out of different artists with, that have different personality types, different skill sets and things like that. Um, you know, some of, like the, the track I did with Toto, for example, I went into that session so green in comparison to where I am now and in comparison to them, of course, because they're just insanely talented, seasoned musicians. Now, what do you mean musicians. by that? Because obviously Toto, of course, did yeah. Africa. You've played that at your sets yeah. numerous times. And the story is, is that his son, uh, Steve Luthiker's son, the lead singer, yeah. reached out to you. Is that right? S somewhat. It was more that... Uh, Lukather asked his son what he thought of what's in it. Like the band got asked if they wanted to try and do something together, get in the studio. And Lukather asked his son Trev, and Trev was like, "Yeah, Dad." He's like 18 year old. Yeah, Dad, what's in it's cool. You should do it. You know, he probably came to a show or a festival or something and saw it. Um, and I don't know if you know this, but it's really funny. Trev is actually on this whole tour with me playing guitar. Oh, really? Yeah. So this is going to be the first ever sort of live hybrid of that I've ever done for this project. Um, I'm, Hopefully playing drums, we're still trying to build it all up there right now. Um, and we uh, are hoping that it's all going to come together in time for the show tonight. But yeah, Trap's going to be there rocking on guitar. Uh, and I'm going to be doing some performance up there myself as well. There's a lot of drummers that started out in bands and migrated into the electronic world. Is it? Like yourself. Yeah. And uh, Rage Against the Machine, I know, was a, a big uh, part of your musical learnings and, and those kind of things, right? Yeah. Uh, Death from Above, 1979. Yeah, yeah. Right. That, was, that was the first act that sort of got me into dance music, because it was rock and roll, or like sort of grungy dance music. What is it about drummers and electronic? Well, I think in terms of the DJing aspect, drumming is very similar to DJing. 
it's like the way you move the jog wheel or a vinyl in the push and the pull of the tempo is exactly how you would push or pull your speed as a drummer to like pull the band back in time or, or pick things up a bit. Um, doing a drum fill is exactly like doing effects at the end of phrases uh, and then setting up loops and, and building progressions over time and things like that. It's just like kind of switching to playing the hi-hat to playing the ride and, th and things like that. Um, so I found that very similar. Um, I think you have an understanding of rhythm um, and uh, it's a little, little challenging as a drummer going into producing if you haven't played bass and you haven't played keys and things like that. That is something that took me quite a while, um, and a lot of a lot of practicing and learning was how to write a song as opposed to just lay down an, a beat, you know, and then sample something. That's awesome, and I, I can't wait to see you playing drums. I, I don't think I have I mean, seen this. Before. I haven't played for like ten years, and I've been practicing the last few weeks, getting back into the swing of it. Okay. We're gonna see. I'm gonna. I'm taking. I'm taking baby steps into this. Like, uh, there's a lot of new elements that are all really exciting, and I want to make sure I deliver a really good show rather than trying to do too much and not being able to handle it. So, right. by the end of this tour, um, I'm sure I'm gonna have a, a pretty good grasp on a lot of new and exciting things. Do you think by the end of this tour, you'll also be like Tommy Lee playing the drums above the crowd? Yeah. Definitely not. <laughs> um, I don't know if I can afford that kind of production just yet, uh, and. I'm not not going to be that talented at drumming just oh, in a few weeks. Don't underestimate yourself. <laughs> yeah, Come on. But we'll we'll see. I, I'm I'm hoping to get to a to a level that it's just fun and exciting. Well, appreciate the time. No Great problem at all. Yeah, Thank you. Look forward to the set tonight. Yeah, I'm excited. Can't wait to see you drumming above me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to some degree, I mean, I'll be raised on the stage, but not over the top. All right. Yeah. Well, sooner. Next time. At some point. Yeah. I want to see that. Oh, awesome. Thanks for your time. Thank you. It is uh, What's So Not, Not All the Beautiful Things, his debut album, and you're watching B-Sides On Air.